Chain growth is another major class of reactions that are used in polymer synthesis. And there's several variations of that, but we're going to focus here on a particular one called free radical polymerization. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I want to step back and compare what we already learned about step growth polymerization with chain growth polymerization so that we can understand the key differences between these two types of systems. If you remember in step growth polymerization, the reaction occurs due to functional groups that are on the ends of monomer units. And those functional units then can react with each other to join monomers together, to join polymers with monomers, and to join two polymers together. So a key feature uh, of that mechanism is that high molecular weight polymer is produced at the late stages of the reaction. Because remember that in the early stages, you have mainly monomer units present. So the probability is highest that reactions will occur between monomers uh, or short fragments and monomers. So in the early stages, you build up a small or low molecular weight fragments, low degrees of polymerization. Then in the later stages, it becomes more likely that uh, growing or longer chains will join together. Uh, and then in the latest stages of the reaction, you join together uh, the biggest fragments uh, to form the largest polymer chains. Now, chain growth polymerization is different because the reaction takes place at an active site that's formed at the end of a monomer unit. So subsequent monomers are added at that active site. So an active site is formed and another monomer unit is added. That active site is then transferred to the new end of the polymer chain and then additional monomer units are added. So monomers are added one by one to the end of the chain and the reactive site is transferred to the chain. So as a result of this mechanism, high molecular weight polymers are formed very early in the reaction process because those are the parts of this, those are the stages of the reaction where you have the most amount of monomer present in your reaction mix. So this is a key difference between step growth uh, and chain growth polymerization, the way in which the process evolves over time. And we're going to see the implications that that has in terms of the degrees of polymerization and molecular weights of the materials that are formed during this process. Next, I want to take a quick look at some common polymers that are formed by free radical polymerization. Uh, so there's two main classes uh, that I think we're probably all familiar with. One involves a so-called a vinyl group. Uh, and so this refers to a monomer where there's a carbon-carbon double bond, uh, three hydrogens, and then some other group uh, that's uh, attached to, to this hydrogen in the fourth uh, position. So then these polymerize to form a chain with a repeat unit that looks like this. And so this R group can have various compositions. Uh, some examples are shown here in this table. If this is another hydrogen, that's what we know as polyethylene. Uh, if this is a uh, carbon ring, uh, then we have polystyrene, which we've also talked about. Uh, if it's a chlorine group, we have polyvinyl chloride, PVC. Uh, or if we have an acetate group, uh, we can have uh, what's called polyvinyl acetate. Another class of polymers that are synthesized by free radical polymerization is uh, actually a variation on this. Uh, it's called a vanillidine. And so here you have two, uh, two of these uh, non-hydrogen uh, groups that are attached uh, to one of the carbons on the backbone. So for example, if this is a chlorine, uh, if these are two chlorines, you would have polyvanillidine chloride. chloride. And if this is a fluorine, uh, you would have a polyvanillidine fluoride. 